tropes that I am sure you all thought I was going to start with at the beginning of the session. Um, Oscar, you're facing you're a down savage. This... <laughs> you're, you're facing down in this darkened hallway with there's probably a light that's flickering from like the previous battle that you guys fought in here. Um, so there's like a like a fluorescent light that's kind of like swinging briefly and flickering, and when it flickers, we can see the silhouette of Oscar like with a sword like directly in front of him, uh, squaring off with this uh, with this guy who's kind of like in a fencing pose. He's kind of got like his hand back and a scimitar held out in front of him with his right hand, um, and uh, we jump kind of into initiative order now. And uh, Oscar, you have like I said, you have you have a single like turn to act before he will perform an action. Um, okay. And, and just just to re recall the scene, Oscar's pretty fucked up. Um, this guy is also pretty fucked up though, because chains. Uh, hit him pretty good uh, with with a shot, and uh, Fortune I believe is still at full health at least. The the blood map is gone. Uh, go go. <laughs> Darn. They're not in that room anymore. Yeah yeah sorry the blood map is is gone. Technically they're fighting in a stairwell I think. Blood so map. yeah well, blood map like the long hallway <laughs> that leads to the stairwell. I have I have a very quick clarification sure. that will determine uh, what, your next action is? what my next action is sure. and I can't remember how we handle um, this disarm attempts with psychic powers it's um, not rolled as an attack correct yes it is it is essentially a athletics versus athletics check um, versus versus what you cut out uh, an athletics versus athletics. It's an opposed athletics role. Um, with psychic, because well, I think remember that your psychic is... ability essentially is strength ten, right? It specifically gives a strength modifier. Yeah, but it says that it should be a mental effect saving throw oh, to foil the attempt. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes, I'm trying to a mental effect save. Okay. He has to make a mental effect save because we determined that. It makes sense for mental effects because it's not so much the strength of holding on to something, it's more the reaction time and trained ability to know that something like that could happen. Um, sure. The, the, so... the example that I use, just for everybody's clarification on this, the example that I use is if you're tubing and being pulled behind a boat and you have your eyes closed, you can be holding on as strong as you want, but if you don't know which way the boat's going to pull you and yank you, you're going to fly right off that thing. But if you're using your eyes and you can brace yourself against what's going to happen, it's using your brain power and you don't have to use strength to do it. It's using your brain to figure out, okay, if, if it's going to pull me that way, then I have, to, I have to hold on with this much force, et cetera, here and here and here. Sure. So it's, it's more mental effect than it is strength or, a, it's a, in this case, a physical effect. Say. Also, not the case that the stronger the warrior, the more tightly he is going to be Correct. permanently gripping his rifle. In fact, it's it's probably the opposite. <laughs> probably, yeah. Okay. You want to so, you want the feather like grip uh, when you're making precision uh, things occur. Well, in so that I think that actually fits to the the situation then because Oscar has sort of had some uh, no pun intended tunnel vision. Uh, up to this point, and he's been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy, whereas that's not really his strength, uh, particularly. So, I think he is going to... So, if this guy is squared up with him and waiting for another attack, Oscar is going to, like, faint to go in and then use uh, his... Uh, telekinesis to try and yank the weapon right out of his hand towards you, right? Like, like towards me. Him. He's trying to, yeah. yeah. And just to set the scene a little bit more, too, he realizes he can't outrun you, Oscar, because you, you, in order to catch him, you've had to been using teleport. Like that's that's the reason why you're you've caught him, and Fortune is still like a turn behind. Right. Um. I think <laughs> to to be clear, if it weren't for uh you know, not wanting Fortune to be locked down here with this guy, Oscar would have just gone up to the original entrance. Right, teleported and, like, on the other side of him off. and just yeah. ran up the stairs. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, he, he's, he's aware he's not going to be able to outrun you, so he's turned to fight you. And that's essentially why he stopped trying to evade you. His hope is he takes you out and then gets away from Fortune before Fortune shoots him in the back of the head. That's, that's his hope here. Um, so I have to make a mental effect save or be disarmed, right? Have, just have the thing yanked out of my hand. Correct. All right. Are you ready for my mental effect save? Oh, man, I guess so. That's a big failure. Whoa. So, yep. Yeah. So I think that he faints and you see him like go to swing, like defend. And you see that as your moment when he's not paying attention. And you just do, do, do you do anything with your with your body to show this form, like using the force? Or is it simply just a mental effect? I he gets yanked out of his hand. I, I think he. Yeah. So I think Oscar probably goes in like for sort of a. Maybe, maybe he sweeps his sword in kind of from the side coming upward. Sure. But then with his offhand, he holds it kind of back and then yanks the sword, the, the mono blade rather, yeah. the from scimitar. his hands and into that. Yeah, the scimitar rather. Right. Do, do you Whatever make, like, shape. Do you yeah. Make like the grip motion with like your offhand, right? The hand that's yeah. free. Yeah, so he make just like. Motion and we, we see the audience sees that little like that force being applied to the scimitar right as you yank it out of his hand and i think that his eyes go wide as he like tries to fumble with it but he sees you coming with a sword um and he has to react in some way uh to that um but that is an action for you right to, to do that that um minus movement right that is my action you can, you can get but... you can be like up in at engage yeah. range with him um, which means yeah, you will so get attacked I think I, if he tries to, like, bail out. Yeah, I keep pace with him, but I'm assuming... I mean, I don't know what he's doing with his turn, but Oscar is for sure going to keep pace with him. Yeah. Like, maybe, you know, if he's got the sword, he, like... Say so he just, like, flips it in his offhand and, it, you know, squares back up with him and then waits for his his reaction. Okay, yeah, so you just stand in front of him with, like, your sword extended. That is, uh, yeah, yeah cool. it's it's obvious it rather without saying as much it's obvious that uh, if if he attempts to bolt he's going to attempt to kill him cool yeah um yeah and listen this guy's not dumb and uh and so i think that like in the moment and this is his turn now his eyes kind of narrow and he, like, he looks at you, uh, and he sees a scimitar, like, lying on the ground, like, next to you, basically. Or, like, slightly behind you, because you're, like, up in his face now. Um, and, like, his eyes glance to that. And he does, like, you see him do, like, the once-over, like, okay, how do I get out of this? Like, like eyes up and around, like, you know, okay, is there anything I can grab or anything like that? Um, and then I think that he his eyes come back to you, and they narrow, and uh, he says, Why do you do this, alien? Who sent you? A friend. The one, uh... The one, uh, trying to catch his breath and us. <laughs> yeah. So Fortune slides around the corner, like, puts his hand up against the wall, like, panting, and sees the scene laid out before him. So Fortune, um, his, his turn, he, he's gonna set a reaction that I'm not gonna reveal, but, yeah. He, he has an action saved essentially for a condition sure. to be made um yeah well oscar oscar is not done speaking with this guy though yeah yeah but, but so just, i think just for, yeah. Just for, yeah, yeah 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 for purposes when, when you say like you know the guy catching up with us fortune has a moment to like come around and do what he needs to yep. do uh, and fortune you see that that oscar has you know has like the difference here is like Oscar has his back to you and the guy has his back to the exit. So like in an instance, there could be a moment where he just like darts back and tries to get away. Um, so, but Oscar's essentially got him at his mercy, right? Oscar will be able to like essentially cut his head off or like stab him or hamstring him as he attempts to turn and run, which is why yeah. he didn't during his turn. To, to clarify, it would be obvious. I didn't discard this guy's sword yeah it's so like, i think it's like probably what around, right? probably what no I, he would have 
just hung on to it with his offhand. So yeah, for, you, you fortune really probably like comes around the corner. To yourself is yeah. What you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So I like snatched it. Okay. So yeah. fortune would come around the corner and see Oscar, you know, standing like his sword pointed at this guy sure. with, uh, I mean, surely he remembers the scimitar from yeah. minute, minutes or it's, moments it's ago. It's extensively been like two yeah. minutes. Yeah. Like e even in all of this clamor, it's, completely obvious that yep. he's been disarmed and that oscar has his weapon yeah and i've actually I, i've probably been describing it as a scimitar it's actually probably a cutlass you know what a cutlass looks like That's, i think they're one and the same I, but... they are but i think that a lot of people associate scimitar with like the big wide bladed arabic style weapon which is actually a different type of weapon it's not actually a scimitar um that's at least in my personal experience that's what i've seen um, but yeah, it's, it's it's essentially like a pirate cutlass, if if we're talking uh, relation to real world. But anyway, Fortune, you get there, um, and what is your like? What is your action that you take? Like, do you do the whole like I ready my action to shoot him in the head and approach slowly, or like, what what do you do? You have like an action before like perhaps we'll leave combat order if nobody triggers a condition or anything. Oh uh, god, is, is Devin present? Devin, are you, are you dead? He did say he was going to need a couple of minutes for something. Oh my god. Uh, so what are Gogo -Go and uh, Boomer up to presently? Um, okay. He said I'm going to need a few minutes. That was like he did. Minutes ago. That was like several uh, minutes ago. Yeah. That was 20 minutes ago. But whatever. Um, it's cool. The, um, it's, not a, it's not a terrible place to cut back to those guys. Yeah. No, no, no. It probably isn't. Um... So yeah, so so having like kind of relieved the tension down below, and I'll let you know if that had failed, so to or speak, it would have been real bad for you. Um, yeah, oh, so I know. I, I was working. I was working the math out all week. Yeah. Uh, well, like, don't. Yeah. yeah you, know, you you had a you had a uh, what was it twenty five percent chance for that to go very poorly for you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> which is you know perhaps better odds than Oscars used to. Uh, so yeah, so we flash back to to Gogo -Go and Boomer, um, who you know you've you've essentially gotten back to the ship. You hit your you like authenticated yourself, and the ramp comes down, um, and uh, you have this this guy in tow. Uh, you just proceed up the ramp, and uh, where do you go once you get up there? Immediately to Med Bay. Yeah, that's exactly what sure. I was thinking. Yeah, and Gogo's leading this this whole thing, right? Yeah, I, I would go. Like, I would go to would try stay, to like behind him, right, to make sure he didn't do anything shady. Yeah, so I would lead us to the. <laughs> to, yeah, exactly. Um, no, to the med bay. I'm gonna just. I want to get a better look at what's going on with his neck. Okay. Before so, anything yeah, else, you on. lead him. You lead him to the med bay, um, and. Uh, and you get over there, and um, he's still, like, doing the follow thing, and he's walking at a specific, like, set pace behind you, Gogo, and he's it's always the same exact distance. And if nothing, this individual is highly trained to do this. In fact, Gogo, there's probably a moment where, like, you just forget he's even there. He's so good at this, you just forget that he even exists. Um, until you, like, turn around, like, and you're like, oh, wait, yeah, that's right, I have this weird guy following me. Um, and you get over to the med. Have we determined an age of this person? Just curious. Um, he's probably around. It's hard to tell with like the shaved. Sure. The shaved yeah. Head and like, but I mean, like a of, general like, kind of nondescript facial features. He's probably in his mm, late twenties. Okay, so he's like on the younger side. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not older. Um, and uh, and you you missed your chance to shoot him in the head, Devin. You're both dead. Uh. <laughs> Shit. congratulations yeah. later Oscar that's died, it gg he as you ran around the corner panting you got a uh, monoblade katana and yeah. pirate cutlass through your gut and you're now also fortune the fortune got bodied is, is that for real no it's not for real we, we... okay i was gonna say <laughs> I, I don't i don't see any of these of rolls, and i was about to finish my glass and and cry in shame <laughs> we we cut back to gogo -Go and boomer because you were on a hiatus um, yeah, sorry. Fam no, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. Fam family issues. So. This, this won't take long. Um, so we get back to uh, to 
go go and boomer uh and you guys are at the med bay and like he's just standing behind you go go <laughs> like awkwardly his head is like completely down um and you can see now now that you're in like better lighting because like outside it's dark and there were like poor lighting everywhere um and uh because you there was a moment remember and i'll remind everyone this is a heavy atmosphere right so like you had to put on your mask and then take off your mask and like you had to travel a distance across the spaceport with your mask on and so there's not a whole lot of like natural or artificial lighting where you guys were but now that you get in the lighting you can see um that across his head uh are are these uh odds um like pock marks have you ever seen uh i'm trying to think of the disease that causes it uh hold on one second um blotch they're blotches he's very he's very his skin is very blotchy um let me see if i can find a good picture for you guys no i really don't think we need <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i totally do um i i feel your descriptive uh abilities <laughs> are fine at this point <laughs> yeah. oh, yes, cool it's right there um his skin is kind of like that all over his head and like down his neck and you couldn't really notice like in the dark um, but it's kind of that, that blotchy, um, weird red and white spotted speckled, uh, skin. Um, and you can see now better in the light as well that around his neck, he's got that, like, that weird shingles, like, scabbing in places, um, like, wound around his neck. And, uh, and yeah, you get to the med bay and he's just standing there silently, like, with his head down and his hands folded in front of him. Is there, like, a delousing station? or like decontamination yeah or... yeah there's there's totally a decontamination like thing you lay him down on the table and like the glass comes over him and like decontaminates all right yeah i strip his ass naked and i put him on that table yeah and just run him so i think that i think that yeah decontamination that you, you three or four up, times you pull off the blanket um and you see that that blotchiness that covers his skin is is his that is his entire body um you also notice at this point he's not wearing shoes either and, uh, and yeah, he's wearing nothing under this blanket. He's completely as the day he was born. Actually, you know what? Um, since we're in the med bay, grabbing gloves, and I'm going to start taking samples of and everything. Uh, skin samples, uh, if he has enough hair, hair samples with follicle, the whole nine yards. Sure. Uh, right down to, uh, like, toenails and any pustules. Like popping a pustule and putting the pus in a pastry dish. Yeah, I don't think there's any of that. It's really just this blotchiness and this neck wound. And I totally meant petri dish, not pastry. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I threw up a little in my mouth when you said pastry dish <laughs> full of pus. You, you, you just, just know that when Oscar and Fortune return, there will be nice fresh baked pastries for you all. Uh, that sounds delicious. Right. Yay. Yeah, if they return. return. No, not, now I'm hoping I do die. Yeah, right. yeah. If death, not, that'll kill you. Death is a better option. Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so you're taking like all of this, uh, all of these samples and stuff. And um, again, he here's the strange part. Okay, physically, he is a fine specimen of a man, of a human male, I should say, because we also have aliens in this world. Um, physically, he's his muscles are well defined. Uh, he's, he's very slender, but he's got, like, enough, like, a decent amount of muscle tone to him. Um, he At just... At one point, I would have to check and see if Gogo was actually swooning. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, Gogo, so this is kind of, like, an awkward position. Like, are, are you, like... While he, while he was doing that, I probably would have left and go, gone and stolen some clothes from Boomer for him for when I get back, for when he's done. Right, <laughs> you just, you, you just hack into boomer's room and mm -hmm. opens up. he thinks i don't know the code but right, i do yeah, yeah 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 exactly exactly um i you can only laugh because night, it's so. definitely true <laughs> yep mm -hmm. you totally, i know <laughs> you totally read diary every night. um so you get close uh and and yeah he's like i said in, in like perfect physical condition um and it's kind of like i mean it's, it's a weird it's a weird scene i think that we see here but after you get all that done like he i, I, I assume the go go you told him like you know stay here remain here yeah i would just be ordering yeah, yeah, yeah making yeah. orders yeah right right, right yeah because because he would like he would listen to boomer but he, it's clear that he's confused about the situation that he's currently in 
so he doesn't know what to think of Boomer. Um, but if you say something, he's automatically, like, does it immediately and to the point. Um, and, like, so I assume you tell him to, like, you know, do everything that Boomer tells you. Or yeah, whatever. I just say, listen to him. Whatever he says, do it. Yeah, so I'll be Boomer, back. you're kind of, like, <laughs> guiding him through. with like, And, it's, again, it's awkward because you got, like, this stupid thing and you're trying to translate and it takes a couple commands and it's taking time and you're getting frustrated. And he's getting confused, but he's trying to, like, do the best he can. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so then you get him to, like, lay down on the thing, um, and it, it, like, it goes, you go to, like, slide the thing, like, pull the, the glass over him, um, and I think you see, like, his pupils dilate, and you see him, like, start to shake a little bit, uh, he's clearly scared out of his mind about what's about to happen to him. Jordan. Yeah. I apologize, but I apparently have accrued a great deal of wipe aggro. Could we maybe switch over to the other two for a moment? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, he's clearly, like, super scared that you're going to put him in there. And, uh, and yeah, I think that y- y- that's the scene that we end on. Like, you close the thing, and it sh- shoots over to um, back to Fortune, uh, who, by See, the way, Fortune... You, you thought that you were DMing today. Yeah, I guess. Whereas, <laughs> really, <laughs> we're... Oh. Um, so, uh, switch back over to, to Fortune. You've just slid around a corner and, like, planted your hand up against the wall. And you see that, like, um, that Oscar has the, the cutlass, the, like, pirate cutlass, like, in his offhand. And he's, like, pointing the his sword at the guy's, uh, at the guy's neck, at Victor's neck. Um, and Victor's just, like, doesn't, he doesn't look scared. He looks curious. Okay. Um, and they're having, like, a conversation as you come around the corner, so, like, what is your, if we were in initiative, what is your action that you would take at this point? Uh, hold action to, sh- well, first off, would I have had a chance to reload? Yeah, as you were running, you totally could have, like, slapped in a, a few more rounds, for sure. Okay. It only um, an action to reload, so yeah, you could have done that. Okay, that's, uh... And then, because that would have been my action if I didn't have one. And my action now is to fire if... Well, yeah, pretty much fire if Victor makes a move. Any sure. move. Okay. So, yeah, you, you use your movement, right, to, like, run around the corner. That was the, that yeah. was the deal with you being slower than them. Um, mm-hmm. And so, so yeah, so we jump back to the conversation. You said there was more conversation you wanted to have. Um, he asked you why you do this. You said for the guy uh, who's following us, and he slides around the corner panting. And, uh, and, and he, he, he kind of, like, I think he, like, glances, um, and, and he goes, and why does he do this? Yeah, Oscar just glances back slightly, like, you know, he keeps... The, the side eye. Yeah. It's presumed that he keeps one eye. <laughs> he can't see them, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, he gestures more than anything back to fortune to indicate like well yeah so you can approach we're, we're out of initiative order at this point you guys did not activate the condition that he was uh that he was attempting to to do so so uh, we're out of initiative he's he's kind of at your mercy but like again he seems, uh, he seems curious more so than like scared for his life or anything just out, out of out of character for a second. Like Oscar is very curious here because how did you end up with this sword? That's what I need to uh, know. He telekinetically threw. You see that mental save that I failed? Real yes. I he I Jedi yanked it yeah. away from him, and now it's a trophy. Yep. Oh, nice. Um, then I would I would probably just. I would slowly start walking forward, and I'd be like, "It's just part of the job." Yeah, and I think I think he like he like looks at you and looks at Oscar, and he says, "What job is that? Who do you work for? You clearly know who I work for." And at, at the moment, that, yeah, at that, Oscar definitely would say, "Perhaps not," and then. <laughs> He Oscar is Oscar has no partic- other than I mean maybe uh, chains getting turned to hamburger he feels a little bit raw about that but Oscar has no particular ill will to to this person 
and is curious um, about how this might be spun to the advantage of those involved. So he he's trying to he he would ask like or he would say you know per, perhaps we do not know who you work for and is like opening up you know he's asking <laughs> he's asking Victor to like make his case basically so, so you're you're just trying to be willfully well, ignorant. Yeah, and actually you don't know who he works for right? Oscar has no fucking clue right. who this guy is <laughs> the only like you have no clue who the fuck this is which actually yeah. I think adds a cool dynamic right like no, Oscar legit has no idea right. no who idea this person why is. Why Fortune is here, why he's hunting this individual, and why this individual is talking about, like... Because essentially, in his mind, like, he's combined the two of you into the same entity, right? Like, you came in together, you're fighting together, clearly you're working for the same people. Yeah, o Oscar knows that this guy is wanted, but the circumstances... Right. Sure. Uh, By whom and for what reasons? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? So, so what do you what do you interject with there, uh, Fortune? When he when he says that, I would say, uh, for the moment, I'm working for uh, what do you say, the Pathosian government? Yeah, Pathosian government. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah, and I I think that I think that he he actually laughs. He's like, oh, that's not true. You are men. Pafosian would uh, not hire a man to do this job. That's the best I can tell you right now. He goes, clearly you are mercenaries. Only few groups that have power and sway, but, and especially that would even do job for Pafosia, or Paphos. It is shithole planet. You see what they do to men here? I won't disagree with that, but you're not the one paying my contract. Yes, but they could. Yeah, Oscar. Oscar, you know, looks back over to Victor. He says, "Um, now would be the time to make your case." Yeah, he goes. Well, it seems you are said we misinformed about how Paphos works. The men, they are slaves. You know who I work for. We were sent here. Scope it out. One of a couple of my men got reckless, captured. We attempted to take them back. But found out there is Well he, you can tell he's like searching for the word in English. Um and he says a word in in like the Russian that he speaks. Um and, uh, and he says it a few times, like, if you've ever seen somebody, like, trying to grasp for a word in a different language. Yeah. Uh, and then he comes up with, I think it is called Maltec. I think that is accurate description of what is going on here. Illegal technology? Oscar, Oscar just, um... Ass. Um, yeah, he just. I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm just. I'm waiting for more information. That wasn't enough for, yeah, for anything yeah, you, yet. You, yeah. He pauses and like you guys like look at each other and then look back at him, expecting more. Uh, and uh, and I think he goes. Yeah. Can we well, perhaps go sit down? This is very uncomfortable. With sword at my neck. I will tell you what you need to know if it spares my life. Um, I would def. I would look over it. Oscar, I'd shake my head no, but then I'd look back at Victor and I'd be like, I, you're not going to die yet. Or I can say, I'd tell him, you're not going to die. The contract says it lies. But depending on what you say may or may not sway who you get turned into. Okay, so yeah, so I think I think that he looks like back and forth and he says, delivery to Pafosian government then. That would be unfortunate. Fate worse than death. They have biotech research going on here. It is highly susceptible. It controls the men that they have. A few of my men and I, they were captured. We attempted to take them back, remove those damnable collars from them, and they died within a few weeks. 
seems as though once someone has them on, they can never be taken off. At least for extended periods of time. Bo Boomer's neck just begins to begins to itch <laughs> slightly for a reason he can't pin down. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah uh, God. Yeah. So o Oscar. Oscar. Um, I. I think. First and foremost, Oscar is uh, a, a pragmatist here, and he just looks back to Fortune and he asks, um, "How much was the contract for?" Do you See that? I think I put it on there. Let me look at my notes because I have it all on my notes. Like. So I didn't write down a price. Yeah. While well, while you're was, looking, I, I'm fairly certain it was. 2, was it three, two thousand credits? Okay. 2, I, I, oh no, you're right. It was two thousand credits dead. Three thousand credits alive. Three thousand alive. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, just it, to to explain a little further, like what's going on in Oscar's heads here, he he has some, uh, serious moral concerns, but, you know. He he understands that the the financial aspect needs to also work. <laughs> well, my my concern I've I've got this going three ways right now. One, like you said, financial. Two, like you said, morals. Like, well, that's kind of fucked up. Three, I'm still under contract by the government. But I am in a mercenary group where we work for the contracts. highest bidder. But you, you yeah. can't flip on every contract you get. Otherwise, you're never going to get a contract. Yeah, contracts go go bad all the time. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like you know, you, you, you're absolutely maybe correct, fortune. Like you, maybe we fail to report this. You, you flip and... on a bunch of contracts, and then all of a sudden, Claire just stops sending you contracts because they're like, well, yeah. your your success rate is or low. or no one goes to. Claris for contracts exactly. anymore because they just flip on them whenever someone's going to pay them more. So at some point, you have to hold loyalty to your contract. Right, and the problem is Claris is sure. super neutral, and they'll just accept contracts if it involves money. Yeah. If it involves money and nothing that's going to, like, have them fight against themselves, that's all they care about. Yeah. Competition mm -hmm. is one thing, but like, actual altercations are a completely different thing. Yeah. Um, I, I well, mean, he, he has... I would say I would say probably previous previously. Well, for one, the way this contract was handled was way out of the way I would have handled this contract. Uh, and two, I would say I'd probably been pretty faithful with Claire, so I would probably be okay getting bought out on this contract. So I would. Uh, when do you ask me how much the contract was for? Yeah. So I mean. I would probably he's, say he's insinuating was... like to to the both of you he he's pushing the conversation to be like what can we do here? To, yeah. I would say well uh the contract was for 4000. Um yeah, so you're trying to to convince him that it was for 4000. I think that he has a moment of like his eyebrow raises um as if that sounds like a lot to him. And uh, and I think that you'll have to roll. Up Oscar, check. Oscar chimes in, four thousand alive. Sure, sure. Yeah. sure yeah, yeah. So so if you want to roll me, actually, this is totally dealing with money, so it's a business check. Uh, Oscar, Hooray. if you want to attempt to assist with a business check. With business, I mean, um, it would be the same as with yeah, persuasion, persuasion, I suppose. Right, but yeah, if you're doing it, like makes no. Thing, yeah, yeah, it makes no numerical difference. Yeah, I think if you get a. Um, I think if you get an eight or higher, you'll succeed and give give an additional plus one. <laughs> Trade him for a rocket launcher. They don't carry. They can't carry heavy arms when they're when they're like secluded underground. All right. Come Big money. The best you got. Big money, no whammy. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Um, okay, and which attribute I'm using for this? Uh, it's going to be charisma for business. Charisma. So, yeah. Okay. Business charisma, and then you get and when it says other modifier, just add an additional. I I want to point out I rolled two sixes for that eleven. Sure. Oof. Yeah, my um, athletics check was the same way. So I think that I think that he says I think that he looks 
he's clearly like intimidated by Oscar, right? And like he knows that like you could just ring it out of him. Um, yeah. But I think that the business check is probably not a success, and only because he probably looks and he says, "Do not have that much liquid available." But I do have about thirty five hundred. It will leave me at least enough to get me off planet. What if we got you off planet? He kind of looks at like, You get me off planet, perhaps I can speak with my people and get you a little bit more money. I'm not I'm not very high, you understand, but I have contacts. How far off planet would you need to get? Um, I think that he says to you, uh, let's see. When Os Oscar is very interested in the word contact, and whenever we work out the destination, he'd like to pursue that. Sure, 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 sure. Um, he says, uh, he goes, eh, I know a small trading hub. It's in, it's on, uh, Giz Gizikis, my light system. It's only two jumps away from here. Very short trip. Could probably pay four thousand. You get me there. Okay. What was that? What was the name of that system? It's uh the the Malite system. And the planet okay. is called Gizikis. Why don't I see this system or sector? It's uh it's seven oh seven. Oh, yeah, right at the end. All the way at the bottom. Yep. It is okay. an ocean world. It's a pirate world. <laughs> oh, um, oh my god. Well, uh, well, Oscar doesn't know that. Fortune 100% knows that he, like, you know who this guy works for, and if he's telling you where a safe house is, it's a pirate safe house. Yeah. Like, you know uh, for sure. Yeah. Like I would think. say, uh, system to drop him off in. Yeah, I would. I would say, give me one minute, Oscar. Don't let him move. <laughs> okay. Uh, I and then compad back to to Boomer slash Margo uh, you at, or Gogo go at the same time. You're too far underground. Oh shit! God damn it! Yeah. You kind of uh, take yeah, it with you. We can't. We can't edit. Uh, Gis Gisicus. Oh, you can't? Okay, let me let me fix that. Uh, that's not true. It says all players can edit. Then I guess I'm not a player. Um, <laughs> you, you may have to... You may have been logged out for some reason. If you just refresh Roll20, try it again. Because sometimes okay. Roll20 will, like, log you out, but it keeps you in-game. It's actually how I'm allowed to have two, <laughs> two, two open at the same time. Because <laughs> it keeps right. you in-game, and it updates everything, but it just won't allow you to actually, like, do anything on it. No, I can't edit. Uh, okay, well, I'll just redo it then. Uh, close. Um, also, so, uh, well, after I guess I can't oh, wait, contact. Wait, wait, I was totally looking at the wrong thing. My bad. Okay, I was looking at a completely different tab. There you go. You can edit it now. My bad. That was my bad. Okay, so go ahead. Go, go, go crazy with it. Um, then in that case, I would be, I would look over it at uh, Oscar with a very inquisitive look. <laughs> and hopefully he can read it. Like, what, yeah. what do you think we should do kind of thing. <laughs> Oscar is, like, um, translating human emotion. Like, so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah human blood. emotion. <laughs> you see, yeah, you see smoke start to come out his right <laughs> ear. Subtlety. Is this really easy? Ear hole, right? Because you don't actually have ears. It's just a hole in the side of your they're, head. They're ear, they're ear ports. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like little vent. They've got a little fan <laughs> spinning. He's, he's got um, error. Does not compute. Does not compute. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think he's. Yeah. <laughs> that that'll be like the session ten reveal is that actually Oscar was a robot the entire time. The whole time he was an armature. The whole time. He's actually an advanced AI. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think Oscar. Oscar has been in this particular situation sure. probably more times than Fortune realizes. Actually, uh, and he is you know 
I, I think to, um, you know, to both of them, he's probably kind of ever so slightly relaxed, you know, um, and maybe step to the side. So fortune isn't just talking at the back of his head any longer. Right, yeah, yeah. You um, guys are kind of side by side in the hallway. Yeah. So he says, um, I, it's not just about the money. This is, this seems very serious to me. I, I believe I, if he's being genuine, I believe I support what these men were doing. All right, come on with us. Yeah, so don't do make you, any sudden moves. Do you do the whole like put like <laughs> he, spin him around to put your yeah. gun up to his back? Because like yeah. Oscar probably should no, I, walk I, around. I, at this point with the sword at his neck the whole time back to the ship. No, Oscar, yeah, Oscar, Oscar tucks the cutlass into, like, he probably sticks it in a belt at his side and then sheathes his own and says, um, you know, maybe he even just starts walking without addressing him further yeah, and, and says, uh, catch, like, when, we, when, when you shove the cutlass, like, into your belt yeah. or whatever, his eyes, like, glance at it for a moment, but he, like, he's, like, there's this moment of like maybe I can try, but then he's like, "No, nah, that's stupid. I'll just die." Right? Because like, <laughs> yeah, like Fortune still got his gun out. Like you technically still have your sword out. Like, there's the moment of like, you know, is this my chance? And then he's like, "Nah, it's, I'm too far gone. Like they're they're cooperating with me. I might get out of this and just be in debt a little bit. Like, yeah, I might, I might and, as well just go along with it and see what happens. You know, if something better comes, uh, along, alive, maybe I'll maybe alive." I'll die, but. Alive and broke is better than dead and rich. Yeah, and that that is the pirate way. <laughs> right. Yeah. And o Oscar does tack on, um, we will be taking the money, though. <laughs> right, like, as oh, you yeah. walk by. And he, he <laughs> just, like, I think he just smiles and nods, and um, he, like, so, he does, like, yeah. a little, like, half bow for you to, like, pass him. Because I assume you're going to walk in front and Fortune's going to walk behind. Something like that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Um, yeah. Fortune, roll me a perception check. Ah, son of a bitch. Always the things I'm not good at. Based on wisdom, Actually, obviously. I, I got, I upgraded my... Planet Yoho, got it. Check out. That's good. Nice. Yeah. So, as he goes by, Victor's, Victor, like, bowed his head slightly, and then he looks up, and you see, visually, pure venom directed immediately at the back of, of uh, Oscar's head just hateful like lust for blood venom uh in his eyes and it passes just as fast as you saw it uh and mm -hmm. he continues to walk like quietly and contemplatingly uh but there is a moment where you catch it um, i would i would probably quietly say uh it's either our ship or the government probably don't act on that yeah, and, and, and like and like he looks and he like realizes that maybe you saw it and he's like My apologies, friend. I just try to keep better company most of the time. And he like turns away and begins following Oscar up the stairs. Yeah. So he may or may not be ra racist isn't the correct word here. Uh speciesist? Sure. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, uh, so, so as, as you're... Would be the, the word you're looking perhaps. For. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, maybe as not xenophobic. You're... Maybe he just only likes humans. So, but yeah, same thing. So. Perhaps. I think as you're climbing the... As you're all climbing the spiral staircase, I think Fortune would definitely hear, like, a kind of a a weird quiet noise that maybe sounds a lot like happy humming like a, <laughs> like a little weird little tune as you're walking up <laughs> the stairs that... back to the surface <laughs> okay um yeah this is definitely the first time i've heard that uh my reaction i would probably just 
face palm without face palming. Sure. But they just give a little shake of the head. You do the you do the head down, shake the head a little bit, and then. Yeah, like what the hell is he doing now? Right. Um, but I, I, but I probably interpret it as success. Sure. So. Yeah. So like I think, he, uh, he has succeeded it's in. It's very. Something. It's very quiet. It's very very quiet. Yeah. But. Fortune probably picks up on it. Right, it's very quiet, but with the dead silence of everything else and the kind of enclosed space, that's how you can, that's how you're able to just pick up it very faintly. Um, and uh, last question: Yeah, do we pass by, or are we were we standing next to the guy with the assault rifle from the beginning? Yeah, you guys were right there. You like you guys can loot this place if you want as well. Um, it's kind of dependent on like how much stuff you guys can carry, but. Um, you could basically get uh, your choice of an assault rifle, uh, an SMG, or a shotgun. Now, remember, yeah. we are playing this point, rules, and it doesn't yeah. matter here. At so, this point, uh, Oscar has both of Victor's weapons. Right. And so remember, yeah, to add, um, add that to your character sheet, add one encumbrance. Right. Yeah. And then right. the, the shotgun, add that as an encumbrance as well. Like, we, we got to play by the Yeah, because you, you still, do you still have a shotgun, or did you drop that? I have his shotgun. I okay, then I, I pick up the I pick up the assault rifle, and I leave the SMG. Okay. And at this point, I the only encumbrance I have is my yeah. And remember, uh, there's, there's also there's also like uh, there's combat field uniforms you can pick up too. He wants oh, I forgot yep. about those. Which is to say, if you want to strip a dead man naked <laughs> quickly, right? Yeah. So yeah, I probably, probably wouldn't worry about that. Shit. Cause, cause my idea there is I don't need a combat uniform because I'm usually ranged. So, right. you need to be. But I will pick up that assault sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I will pick up that assault rifle though. Okay, yeah, totally. Uh, you totally pick up the assault rifle, no problem. And uh, that is. And that that's only one encumbrance, correct? Yeah, yeah, all weapons are unless they're gunnery weapons are one encumbrance. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so I'm, called, I'm still. Sorry, it's called a combat rifle, not an assault rifle. Or combat, combat rifle. rifle. Okay. It's basically like an M16. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh... I need uh, the both of you to roll me a luck check, a luck save, please. Mm. Mm. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> we die! Yay! <laughs> um. So I think that with the double fail, it's very clear what's going to happen here. Uh, I think that as you guys are walking, you're, you're headed back to the ship and you get back just fine. Um, but as you're walking back to the spaceport, we see, um, we like fade back in through a lens of a camera that's watches you guys come like up out of the fountain and then like, or not up out of the fountain. Cause there was actually a blind spot. That's the reason they were using it. But like, as you're like walking down, like one of the large, like mall ish hallways, like it spots you and it like zooms in on the the, the victor in the middle and mm -hmm. like we see back at like the control panel we see somebody like take a take a screenshot and like look at it a bit closer and we see him pick up a phone uh and that's a great place to take a little break hooray plan might be changing possibly <laughs> yeah cool uh... It would have mattered had one of you or both of you passed, obviously, but since since yeah. you both failed, I mean. Yeah, no, we, we totally could have thought to, like, cover him up in some manner. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. He, you know he is a wanted criminal on this planet. By the government we're trying to avoid. Right. By the government in a city where which you are in the capital of, and also yeah. everything is indoors because of the atmosphere. So, yeah. there were a couple things there. You, um, you know what, guys? You know what, guys? I am so disappointed you've learned nothing from Boomer's Paranoia. That's right. <laughs> You'll get a big talking to when the gunships show up. Um, so, uh, <laughs> let's, take, let's take a little bit of a break. Let's take like a 10-minute break. Be back at 710 EST. All right.